First of all, thank you. You're very generous. I would like to thank you first for coming to see the movie in a theater. That means the world to me. Thank you very much. Yeah. And of course, thank you, Chris, for being here tonight. That means the world to me, of course. No, thank you for having me. And uh, not just any theater, this DGA theater that's been renovated. It's my first time back in it since it's been renovated. It looks absolutely beautiful. And thank you for giving the speakers a decent workout. That was <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> so my first inkling of anything to do with this project is, is you and I had dinner some years ago with a couple of producers. And somebody around the table, uh, it was just back in, it was after arrival. And somebody said, oh, Legendary just acquired the rights to, to Dune. And you immediately said, uh, somebody said, well, what's going on with that? And you said, well, nobody's doing anything with that. And two things were immediately apparent to me. One is you should never be a professional poker player. <laughs> and the other is soon enough, I'm going to be sitting there watching your version of this incredible book. And now that I have, a couple of times now, uh, I want to know how long was this long-held dream? When did it start? Um, you mean, oh, I apologize, Chris. You said how long, uh, the, 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 just the, the, the when, did, when did you first want to do oh, this book? How oh, long has this been in your head? Oh, oh okay. Um, <clears throat> I read it when I was 13 years old. So it's like, uh, and of course, when I, I, when I read the book, I, uh, it was at the precise moments where I was trying to get interested of what's uh, was happening behind the camera and, uh, discovering the job of a director. And I remember the, at the time, uh, my best friend and I were writing screenplays, doing storyboards, and we were dreaming at the time. Of course, it was fantasy, but we, we, we were storyboarding Dune. I mean, we were d trying to, it was dreaming at the time, but it was just like out of reach, of course. Then when uh, I uh, came here working in LA, uh, when people were asking me what would be your ultimate project, and I would, uh, it, the book always came back in my mind. It's a book that stayed with me for 40 years and... I kept getting back to it. There's, it still brings a deep joy and a deep inspiration to me. So it's like, it's a, uh, but I will say I considered, uh, working on, on, uh, on the book since maybe seven or eight years that I started to say, okay, where are the rights? How come after the Lynch movie, which with all respect to the master, I loved some aspect of it, but there's a, when he deviated from the book. Uh, so I, I kept for years wondering who will do another adaptation. I was waiting for an adaptation. I was waiting, waiting, and then I get tired. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, with respect to the Lynch adaptation, what, what I feel when I see the film is this is a very, very different film. Uh, and it does seem closer to the book. Uh, not that I'm an expert on the book. I read it when I was about, about the same age as, as you did. Um, and yet there's some kind of lingering respect for some of the Lynch film, I think, in there, even as it's a completely new version of it. And, and I think in some ways what they share is, is a complete commitment to realizing an absolutely detailed world. And how did you start to plan the level of detail that, that's in this film? That's the, the thing is that I said to the crew, uh, to all crew that it, we were not there to express ourselves, but to try to bring Herbert, the words of Herbert to the screen. I really, we, the book was the Bible. We, we went back to the, the, uh, the book all the time at the beginning. At the very beginning of the process, I, uh, sat alone with my storyboard artist and I spent weeks drawing alone with him. A bit like I did when I was 13 years old with my friend. It was exactly the same. So trying to, like an arche archaeologist, trying to go back to the the old images that I had when I I was really trying to go back to the images I had when I read the book at f the first time when the, the those uncorrupt image, you know, the image and the emotions that I had when I read the book and and. Uh, Focusing on nature and uh, and uh, the place of the human the, the, of humans in the ecosystems and so um, it and I said to the crew that, um, that I, I, I did that work with my storyboard artist and then I brought one designer and uh, it was forbidden to talk about to take any reference from, reference from the internet I, I wanted it to come from dreams or trying to meditate and trying to find images to 
I just, you know, there's an elephant in the room and it's Star Wars. Okay? It's like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's to design a movie like that, or, uh, that uh, Star Wars has being inspired deeply by, by Dune, they are trying to, f- just trying to f- bring something fresh or, that. so the idea was to focus on dreams and book the book, the book, the book. I did that, that work, uh, happen in parallel with the screenwriting process. What was the, how did the script, because obviously adapting such a complicated book, such a long book, talk us through a little bit of how that process interacted with, with the design ideas and the visualizations. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, it was a parallel process because at the beginning, uh, uh, I asked Eric Roth to, uh, to put his hands on the keyboard at the beginning and, and, uh, and as he was doing so, I was, uh, uh, starting to, to, to draw with, uh, uh, my friends trying to bring images to, uh, so it was like a parallel work. So, so thing is that I had a lot of time. I have say like a year of, of design and design and design, uh, in a very intimate way, but it was that, uh, just to find the main alphabet, the, the language, the visual language of the movie. Once I found that, I brought my production designer on board and then he explored, he explored that world and they defined all the cultures. And, uh, and at what point was your decision to do just the first half of the book? I mean, it's almost exactly the first half of the book. I think it's slightly into book two. Uh, it's uh, right at the beginning. It's, it's something that I, I uh, proposed uh, to the studio right away because I, I was feeling that the, to try to uh, put that story into uh, one movie will it, it will be damageable. Uh, it will be a mistake. Uh, mm-hmm. And they, they didn't. It was not a discussion. They agreed spontaneously. They said uh, the the only thing where we started to talk was that I wanted to make both movies in the same time, mm. and that felt too expensive. <laughs> and uh, and uh, um, I should say that you know you're always as good as your last movie, and you you have bring the repeat what and and I think that Blade Runner wasn't a major. Box office success. So I would, I, I think that they were a bit, um, cold at the idea of, uh, investing for two movies right away. I think that's the, the truth. That's I, what I understood. I, I think that was, <laughs> I think that was negotiating tactics on the studio's part. Cause I think Blade Runner was a very successful film and an incredible piece of work. So I think they were pulling your leg a little with that. But I have to say, having visited the set of, of a couple of filmmakers who shall remain nameless who were doing two films back to back, I've never seen people so exhausted. It's such difficulty. I, I vowed to myself I would never do two films back to back. But I would have cried. I'm so happy we didn't because yeah. I will, uh, sorry, I will not add uh, the stamina to do that. Frankly, the truth, uh, yeah. uh, I'm grateful that it happened this way because, uh, it would have, uh, Shooting in the desert and the elements, it was like, it was, uh, very inspiring, inspiring and exhilarating, but I will have, uh, it, uh, I, we were exhausted at the end of this shoot. Yeah. Exhausted. How many days did you shoot? Um, it's a tricky question because I'm not sure about the answer. I think that I woke up uh, 120 times <laughs> to, to, to take a camera in my hands, but the actual real number for the main crew is 105 or something like that. Uh. But I had, for the first time of my life, uh, I had uh, decided to work with uh, more than one unit mm. because otherwise I will not be here tonight. It was it was like too much work to do and uh, too much little time. So uh, I had to, for the first time, learn how to direct multiple units, and that was like uh, I uh, it's it's not the best way to work. I I, I'm, I love to work with one camera, one tripod. That's it, but but not. I, had, I didn't have the choice I had to do it this way. And where did you shoot? What were your what were your choices in terms of where you would build, where you would find locations? How did you go about that that process? Well, we chose the best for because they had the necessary stage the the, the stage space that we had what needed. I had shot Blade Runner there. They had they are fantastic uh, stages, big enough for the sets that we were designing. And then, uh, we shot in Jordan and in Abu Dhabi because in Jordan, you have like uh, all the rocky, rocky formation that I was looking for, but not the sea of sand. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I said to the studio that I was, it was not a negotiation. I, I didn't want to, 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 to shoot the, 
the desert on the back lot or, or I, I didn't want to use green screens. I wanted to go in the real environment to be as close as possible to nature as Frank Herbert did when he wrote the book. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the, the most spectacular locations that, that you've used in the film uh, is Wadi Rum in, in Jordan, which um, some of you may know from Lawrence of Arabia. And a lot of films have shot uh, in Wadi Rum since Lawrence. Um, but I, for my money, this is, this is the first time I've seen it used in as expressive a way. Uh, the sense of place, I think, is extraordinary. And how was it shooting in Wadi Rum? Because the thing about Wadi Rum is it's this vast valley. I mean, just on a, on a scale, I just can't think of anything else in the, in the world on, on that scale. So how were you getting to where you were shooting? Were you camping out there? Were you staying in a nearby town? Uh, there's a town called, uh, Aqaba that, uh, mm. uh, that is part of the Lawrence of Arabia story. Aqaba uh, by land. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, Frank Herbert, when he wrote Dune, was in, inspired by T. Lawrence's uh, uh, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Mm. Say, and, and then, uh, uh, I mean, it was like a natural, it was something natural to go back because there's so many links between the, uh, Lawrence of Arabia and, and uh, Dune. They this idea of a, a man that decided to, because he falls in love with a new culture, and one, he feels home with this new cult in this new culture and wants to help the culture and goes to war with the culture and then realize that he himself is an instrument of colonialism. So it's very close to, uh, and uh, so it was like, it made sense to go to, uh, to Wadi Rum. Now uh, I, uh, it's, it was my third time that I was shooting in Jordan. I had been there first alone with a video camera, making a documentary about uh, Petra when I was a, a film student. I came back uh, uh, 10 years later with a small film crew to shoot a feature film there. And I remember scouting all around Jordan saying to myself, if ever I, I do a movie like Dune, that's where I come back because the rock formation there are so poetic, so powerful, so unique. Then it became, as you rightly said, uh, more exploited than in, uh, in movies, but uh, it just feels so close to the, the description of the book. Mm. There's a place that the final scene where uh, Paul and Jessica meets finally the Fremen, it's exactly the description. It's like that kind of horseshoe uh, uh, dead end in the rocks. With the, it was like uh, very mesmerizing for me to, to find those, uh, those locations that fit, felt so, so close to the spirit of the book.